Hey, Pretty Girl Club. Welcome to another episode where I am going to dive into the concept of a fluid identity. So when I talk about a fluid identity, I want you to think about what defines you. So I can use myself as an example. So as far as what defines me, a part of it is my beauty or my beauty standard, my internalized beauty standard for myself. And for me personally, I have a fluid beauty standards. So that means that I give myself the freedom to switch up my hair color as much as I want to. If I ever want to play around with makeup or even if I wanted to get surgeries or something as I get older, like a facelift or something, then I can because my beauty identity is fluid. And I believe that um, I look the most beautiful when I can switch up my looks. And so a lot of people, they try to give you flack for changing up your looks because a lot of people in the black community, they view their beauty as being political. So they have these rules that they place on themselves as a culture. They will say things like it's self-hating if you are relaxing your hair or you're not really natural if like you have your edges relaxed and then you're wearing locks. And they will try to police people into uh, wearing their hair in a certain style in order to prove their solidarity with the black community. But I have some controversial views on that. My view is that your beauty and your body and the way that you choose to express yourself, it does not always have to be political. So no, I don't have to go out in the sun and get as dark as possible in order to prove that I'm not a colorist. No, I don't have to wear my hair natural 24-7 in order to prove to random African-American strangers that I don't hate my hair texture. So I've noticed that in the African-American community, There is a lot of uh, performative behavior. So when it comes to people's looks, I've noticed that some people will, they will wear their hair natural and not only will they wear it natural, but they will then go around and kind of almost brag to others about how their hair is natural as if having natural hair somehow makes them more authentic. But I have a different definition of authenticity. To me, authenticity is not you're just wearing the hair that's growing out of your head and styling it. My definition of authenticity is I get to determine what my standards are for myself and I get to then meet those standards. So if my internal beauty standard is I get to wear extensions if I want or I get to if I wanted to relax my hair, I could or if I wanted to dye my hair, I could and I still feel just as beautiful and just as authentic then that is my standard and that is my self-expression. Women are not a monolith. Blackness does not have to be a monolith and the, the expression of your blackness doesn't have to be a monolith either. So you can still love your blackness and have your hair dyed blonde. You can still love your blackness and have your hair, you know, in some sort of tribal Native American hairstyle. So I don't really like the narrative that people try to claim where it's like, oh no, if you want to show that you love yourself, you have to follow X, Y, Z set of rules. And I feel like self-love has no rules. Um, The rule of self-love is just, you want to do things that are benefiting yourself. You want to do things that make you feel the most confident. Um, On this channel, I talk a lot about the concept of privilege stacking. So you want to do things that will set you up to succeed in life. So if that means switching up your hair for a different event or, you know, switching up your hair because you're feeling festive, then I don't see that as being inauthentic. I choose to express my fluid identity through my beauty. I know that some people, they don't like to do that. They just like to have a signature look like, okay, Sarah is the one who has a cocoa skin tone and she always has curly hair or she has the cocoa skin tone and she has 4B hair and it's always in a twist out. Some people like to have a signature look and that is okay. And if that makes you feel the most confident, then you should do that. But what I don't like is when people try to police another woman's beauty. So kind of like how they did with Beyonce, they were trying to police her and almost try to imply that she doesn't have the right to switch up her hair color or to switch up her skin tone, the tanness of her skin or the brightness of her skin, that she somehow is not allowed to control the organ on her body. Your skin is literally just an organ on your body. So in my opinion, you know, your body is like a canvas, or at least that's how I view my own body is I view my body as more of a blank canvas, whereas some people view their body as it's already a masterpiece and perfect as it is. So, and that's fine. Neither one of them is wrong. One is not better than the other. Um, 
I believe that if my body is a canvas, then I get to paint different masterpieces every single day, or I get to change up my masterpiece all the time. But if you're one of those people who says, no, I'm already the masterpiece. So, you know, I just wake up and roll out of bed and, you know, the whole, I woke up like this or whatever. And it's funny how Beyonce sings that song, I woke up like this. But in reality, she did not wake up like that. She has a glam team. She has people that are um, helping her to style herself and all of those things going on behind the scenes. But I've noticed that one of the main ways people will try to get you to be insecure is they will try to shame you for having a different beauty standard than them. So have you ever noticed that, for example, let's say your beauty standard is a dark skin, monoracial, unambiguous black woman, and my beauty standard is a golden skin tone with loose curly hair, and I can wear highlights whenever I want. I've noticed people will shame you if you have a beauty standard that doesn't look like them. And it's like, no, just because I like how something looks and it doesn't look like you, it doesn't mean that I hate you. I've noticed that some people, they have such a fragile beauty ego. That's the best phrase I can think of to describe it. They have such a fragile ego when it comes to their own beauty, or they are so unsure about their own beauty to the point where they can only feel beautiful if everybody else in the world changes their beauty standard to fit whatever their natural phenotype is. So when it comes to beauty standards, you have two options. You can either go against the beauty standard or you can benefit from the beauty standard. Or if you want to, you can kind of make a combination of the two. You can kind of like decide, you can take bits and pieces of popular beauty standards and say, okay, it's popular to have a six pack. Okay, I wanna have a six pack. It's okay to take bits and pieces and then try to uh, make it unique if you want to do that. But I don't believe in shaming the people who choose to simply benefit from the beauty standard as opposed to politically trying to change it or trying to uh, almost brainwash others into believing their same beauty standard. Because in my opinion, I actually believe that every woman's beauty is like a fingerprint. I actually do not believe that two people's beauty um, is going to be exactly the same, even if they are identical twins. I've noticed that even identical twins, they will express their beauty in different ways. So one one twin may wear highlights, the other one might wear her, her, her hair straight, or she might wear it dark. So your self-expression is something that can't actually be replicated in the first place. So I actually think that it's weird when people try to force others into this one singular simplified beauty standard. And oftentimes that beauty standard is based on the male gaze. But I like to base my personal beauty standard on a combination of things. I like to base it on things like, yes, the male gaze can be a part of it. So for example, um, with my body type, I'm sure that some guys will like that body type or whatever. But I also like to base my personal fluid identity and my beauty standard on what positive stereotypes I want to be associated with. I believe that there is a such thing as a negative stereotype, but there's also a such thing as a positive stereotype. So for example, let's say I want to be associated with the positive stereotype of being athletic and being into yoga. The way that I would do that is I would dress up in some cute yoga pants. Maybe I would put my hair in a messy bun. And that is how I would associate with that stereotype. So you get to ask yourself, what positive stereotypes do I want to be associated with? What stereotypes do I love? So for example, I personally love the bougie stereotype. I love the stereotype of being classy, you know, not taking any shit. I'm not the type of woman that will just date any guy. And I'm not the type of woman that's like super approachable and anybody can just walk up to me and talk to me any kind of way. I actually enjoy that stereotype. But there are other people who don't enjoy that stereotype. They like more of a laid back, casual vibe. You know, they want to be seen as being very laid back. They want to be seen as being very um, effortless. And that is okay too. So the way that I determine my beauty standard for myself is I will actually ask myself which stereotypes I want to play into that day. Um, and so for me, the reason why I say that I have a fluid beauty standard or a fluid beauty identity is because I will change up my whole entire beauty standard because it's fall or because it's Christmas or because it's summertime. So for example, I've noticed that in the summertime or once it starts getting more warm, like in the spring, I have a tendency to want to have highlights because I'm like, oh, it's spring, it's summertime, like the flowers are blooming, it's very bright. And so I want my hair 
to look as bright as possible. You know, I want to have just a, a brighter look overall. And then I've noticed that as it gets more into fall and winter, I tend to be into the sleek jet black hair colors and um, kind of like those slicked back styles or straighter hair. Maybe I'll even do like a shorter hairstyle or something. And then I've noticed in the summer, I like to have the long flowing hair all the way down my back. And that's because I personally just have a fluid beauty standard. So I actually like to change it up. And my beauty standard, I know what my beauty influences are. I'm going to, I might have to change the title. Actually, I'm going to change the title of this video. And I'm going to change it to um, how to determine what your beauty standard is. Or like, uh, basically, I'm going to put beauty standard in the title. Because this is actually an important topic. You want to ask yourself, what is influencing my beauty standard? There is no wrong answer. Because I don't like how people try to shame you like, oh, you shouldn't care about, I don't know, you shouldn't care at all about the male gaze. You shouldn't care at all about looking professional. You shouldn't care at all about um, what white people think or what Asian people think or what XYZ group of people thinks. And yes, that sounds good in theory, but we're not living in theory. We're living in reality. So I like to base my beauty standards on reality and I also like to analyze myself and think to myself, what's influencing my beauty standards? So I'll use myself as an example right now. I've noticed that social media, um, that can influence my beauty standards for myself because if I go on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram and I see some influencer that has a really cute hairstyle, I might actually want to try that hairstyle. Like I've never tried it in my life, but because I saw some influencers with that hairstyle, now I want to incorporate that into my beauty standard. So for example, with space buns, I have never in my life worn space buns, not even when I was a kid. But once I saw it online and I saw other girls doing that hairstyle and they looked really cute, then I started thinking to myself, okay, maybe I'm going to try space buns one day because that kind of looks cute. Or maybe I'll try a half up, half down hairstyle with like space buns at the top or not space buns, but like uh, two ponytails at the top. I used to associate those hairstyles with being childish, but because I was influenced by women online who look pretty and um, I saw their beauty standard, I incorporated that into my own. So it's actually, it's not wrong to do that, but you do want to ask yourself, what influences my beauty standards? Um, am I influenced by social media? Am I influenced by the male gaze? Or is there a particular guy that I am trying to attract? And maybe that guy is a professional guy. And he hangs out in a lot of professional spaces. So maybe I'm trying to attract that or something. Like I said, there is no wrong answer. And you don't have to tell anybody what your beauty standard is. You don't have to ask permission to change up your beauty or to change up your look. You don't have to ask permission to embrace who you are or who you want to be. And also, it's okay to change your mind. I've noticed that a lot of people, they will shame you for simply changing your mind and deciding you know what? I don't want to be natural anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and relax my hair just for fun, just to see what happens and to see if I like it. A lot of people will shame you like, oh, why would you put that on your hair? You're putting chemicals on your hair. That's toxic. You know, that's made of toxic materials. And it's like, okay, the whole world has chemicals everywhere. I put chemicals in my car. It's called gasoline. That has chemicals in it. Um, I wash my face with different types of chemicals all the time. I'm breathing in toxic pollutants in the air. So there are so many different chemicals. There are so many toxic things that are technically bad for you all over the earth. Why are you fixating on what I choose to do to enhance my beauty, and suddenly you want to call it toxic. The only reason people do that is because they want to get you to feel shame. They don't want you to have control over your own self-perception. By the way, that's another thing. Um, part of the reason why I like having a fluid beauty standard for myself, meaning that I change it up all the time, part of why I like doing that is because I've noticed that for me, it actually enhances my self-perception. So for example, with changing my hair color. Part of the reason why I enjoy changing my hair color is because I enjoy the fact that I know that I can pull off like 15 hair colors. I mean, I, I just got to say that's like a soft flex. It is. It's like a flex to myself. Like, wow, I wore 25 different hairstyles over the last year and I looked cute in all of them. That enhances my self-perception. So some people will use how they look on the outside, or they will use beauty artifacts. Um, that's the best way I can think of to describe it. Beauty artifacts like makeup or uh, wigs or 
uh, curling your hair, whatever it is, they may use different beauty artifacts to enhance their own self-perception. So I actually, I don't have a problem with that. I only have a problem when people make fun of how others were born and when they shame them, when they basically body shame them for like how they look, because it's like, you don't like it when we do that to unambiguous black women, like shame their features or their hair texture, but then you want to turn around and do it to mixed race women. No, that's not happening over here. But anyway, um, your beauty standard, it is your choice. You have the freedom to have fun with it. So you can say to yourself, you know what, I want to meet a certain archetype. I've noticed that I am influenced by different beauty archetypes. So for example, sometimes I want to dress up like a bombshell. So that means that, you know, my my boobs are kind of out a little bit. The girls are coming out to play. Um, and then other times I like to dress kind of like maybe a sexy librarian. And then other times I like to dress like gym, like a gym bay or like gym rat or something like that. I don't know. I'm just coming up with random archetype names. Other times I want to dress like a cute college girl. So I'll have like my little sweats on or something. Um, or maybe I just want to dress in athleisure clothing. So I've noticed that I'm also influenced by different archetypes. Um, the archetypes that you have in your mind can be influenced by the movies you're watching. So, so for example, maybe you watched some superhero movie and you really liked how, how slim the girl's body looked in the movie. And so maybe you want to incorporate that into your beauty standard, or maybe you want to temporarily take that on. And then you say, Hey, I want to get a six pack or I want to wear a corset and a skirt and just look cute. Or you know what? I really like the color scheme that Wonder Woman was wearing in that movie. I like the red, white, and blue with like the stars and a little touch of gold. So maybe I'll do an outfit that kind of looks like that. I've noticed that I will do that with Disney princesses. I will play into the archetype. So I won't look exactly like the princess, but I will wear the colors. So you guys know that Princess Jasmine is like my favorite princess. So I will play into that archetype. I actually just did not that long ago. I put on, I had my hair in a really long braid. It was in like a long side braid. And then I put on the color, like that teal turquoise color. And that was how I played into that archetype. So you don't have to apologize for what your beauty standards are. And also um, other people, they don't know where your beauty standards come from. So if they say, oh no, you're just trying to look like a white girl. You're just trying to look like this. It's like, well, technically they don't know that. They're just assuming that that's where you got your beauty standard from. Sometimes they may be right. And most of the time they're wrong because they don't have your experiences. They don't have the thoughts in your head. And also your beauty standard for yourself is none of their business. It's your body. It is your level up journey. It's your social climbing journey. So everybody has different goals in life. Everyone has different things that they want to do with their beauty. So that's another thing you may want to ask yourself is what do I want to do with all of this beauty? I mean, look in this fine what do I want to do with all of this beauty? What do I want to do with this nice body that I have or with this hairstyle that I have? How do I want to navigate through society with this type of beauty? Some women will use their beauty to gain attention so that they can talk about causes that are important to them. I've noticed that a lot of vegan YouTubers and stuff will do this. So because they're pretty, people will pay attention to them and they will start social media accounts. Other women will use their beauty to get their bags. Like they will get modeling contracts or brand deals on social media. Um, and then other women will use their beauty to date like however they want, like just to increase their dating options in general. And then there are other women like me who will use their beauty for the overall social power that comes from it. So for me, I like all of those benefits that I just mentioned. So I, I just like all of the social power in general. Um, that I feel beauty can bring. And by the way, I'm not saying that I'm over here just like killing it 24 seven. I'm not. Um, but I have thought about what I want to use my beauty for. So if you feel overwhelmed, like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I want to use my pretty privilege. I don't know what type of pretty privilege I want. All you have to do is ask yourself, what is influencing my beauty standard? And also if I looked like a quote unquote 10 out of 10 today, if I looked perfect right now, what would I be doing? How would I be living my life? How would my life look different? Would I just be more confident? Because by the way, that's enough. That is still a valid answer. 
Some women, they just want to be pretty because they feel like it will increase their confidence, which in my opinion is very valid. That's valid to want to have confidence. It is valid to want to be confident in your smile, to want to be confident in how your stomach looks, or you want to be confident with how your hair looks, how your makeup looks. That is a good enough answer right there. But I've noticed that some people, they want to gaslight you and make it like, oh, if your beauty, like if everything you're doing in life is not altruistic and if it's not revolving around helping other people, then you are automatically a shallow, horrible person. And it's like, no, I don't have to help other people 24 seven. I am not here to be everyone's slave. I did not come to this earth so that I could constantly be making myself a martyr so that I can save others. I am not here so that I can be a social martyr and I've noticed that when people want you to dumb down your beauty, it's because they're trying to make you into a social martyr. They want you to sacrifice yourself. So they want you to sacrifice your pretty privilege on their behalf. They want you to sacrifice your pretty privilege in their honor. I've noticed people do the same thing with things like light skin privilege, white privilege, whatever. But it's like, just because a person has that privilege, that doesn't mean that they owe you. It doesn't mean that they have to say, oh, no, I'm sorry. You know, I'm a white person. I just got uh, I just got elected as the president of the United States. I'm going to step down because you guys should have voted for an unambiguous monoracial black man instead. Or you guys should have voted for some other person instead. No, not everybody is going to do that. And you know what? Not everybody is required to do that. And not everybody is going to want to do that. And that is okay. In my opinion, it is okay to put yourself first or to put your family first or to be self-serving. I don't think that being self-serving automatically makes you a bad person. I think that it actually just makes you a smart person. It is not even smart to be constantly serving others and then you get nothing in return. You're going to be depressed if you do that. So I don't owe other people like an explanation and also I get to use my body, my beauty, my intelligence, and my skills however I see fit. You know why? Because it's my body and it's my life and nobody else is going to live it. But some people, they want to um, have beauty so that, so that they can have this feeling of nostalgia. So for example, I have been around some older women and they will want to restore the beauty of their youth. They will want to restore the beauty that they once had so that they can kind of relive those carefree days because beauty can make you feel carefree or at least for me it makes me feel very carefree it makes me feel like I don't have a care in this world and so I understand why some older women why they don't want to age because they might associate age with not looking as good maybe their internal beauty standard is a more youthful type of beauty and that's okay there is no there is no wrong answer when it comes to beauty some people think that you look beautiful with a lot of wrinkles and then there are others who think you can look beautiful and have less wrinkles. So this is why women get Botox or whatever. But my beauty is a part of my fluid identity because having beauty can give me the confidence to navigate through society in a different way. Um, having beauty can give me the confidence to navigate in other cultures as well. So for example, let's say I want to interact more with my Latin side and then I get a little cute t-shirt with like Selena on it or something, or I get a cute t-shirt that says a phrase in Spanish, and then maybe I wear a hairstyle that is more closely associated with Latin American culture, that actually can contribute to my confidence when it comes to speaking more Spanish or wanting to learn more Spanish. It actually helps me to connect with that part of my ancestry. So I actually think that beauty is a pivotal part of you connecting to your roots. For those of you who have a multiracial background, for those of you who are multi-generationally mixed or you're biracial, um, incorporating your other ethnicities into your beauty standard can actually be something that helps you to feel more connected to it. Or at least that's been my experience. So for example, like when I went to Mexico, I liked purchasing the traditional like shirts and stuff. Um, I also felt very connected to that side of myself when I went into a store and I purchased the hair products that they had. So I got like a deep conditioner, I got a shampoo, I got some hair gel that I still use to this day. And that made me feel very connected to that culture when I was able to beautify myself using beauty items from that part of my background. Another reason why some women choose to um, make beauty one of the core parts of their identity is because beauty can increase your mental health. And here's how. Um, 
beauty can actually help reduce your social anxiety because if you feel more confident about how you look, that's less things that you have to be anxious about. So you're not worried about your stomach's hanging over your jeans and then your back fat is hanging out and then your arms are flabby and you have acne and stuff. You're not worried about all of that. So it literally clears your mind of some of those some of those anxieties and some of those insecurities. So that is why for me, getting into my 30s, I started, I finally decided, I don't know why it took me so long. Well, I do know why it took me so long. It's because people guilted me into thinking that you're a bad person or you're a shallow person if you want to be beautiful or if you want to have pretty privilege. People were like, oh, you're you're giving in to society's ways. And it's like, well, yeah, because it benefits me. It benefits me to play into the system. I didn't make the game. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. So don't get mad at me because I learned how to play chess and not checkers. Don't get mad at me because I knew how to put society in a checkmate by benefiting from their privileges while simultaneously infiltrating into higher spaces. Like, don't get mad at me because I knew how to play the game. Get mad that the game exists. I didn't create this world that we live in. I didn't create pretty privilege. I didn't create beauty pedestals. I didn't create all of these divisions that we've made amongst class and race and culture. I didn't create that. However, I'm smart enough to know how to navigate through it and to flip it so that I can benefit from it. And who gonna check me? But for some people, their beauty can increase their mental health because it, it makes them feel more confident. Um, also, it can make you feel more confident, especially if you are, maybe you want to date or something, or maybe you want to date from a decentered perspective. Somebody brought up a really good point about how decentering men can actually be a lot easier if you are beautiful because you're going to receive a lot of male validation anyway, like whether or not you center them because you're so beautiful and because that's usually what guys validate you based on. So that was a good point. I'm going to um, do a whole episode on that topic coming soon. Also, another reason why people uh, make beauty a big part of their identity is because beauty can contribute to your ambiguity. Like you can use your beauty to play around with ambiguity. You can use your beauty to look uh, less ambiguous, like to look more mono monoracial. So I really like the fact that I can use different beauty tools to play up certain features or to downplay other features so that it can benefit me. So you know how people get mad and they say that, oh, mixed race people, they, they jump in and out of blackness. Yeah, but guess what? Blackness isn't the only one I'm jumping out of, though. I get to jump out of blackness. I get to jump out of whiteness. I get to jump out of Latin American culture. And who go and check me? I'm not ashamed of where I come from. I'm not ashamed of who my family members are. And so I have noticed that some people, they like to use their beauty as a social tool so that they can navigate through different spaces. But what do you ladies think? What is your uh, beauty standard for yourself? Where did it come from? What influences you? And how are you doing when it comes to your 2024 level up journey? Let me know what you think in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.